Yeah, man. I mean, boundaries need to be established. I mean, mm -hmm. I think like from day one, I think once you get too far gone, you want two, three years in the gig where everybody's setting their ways and everybody pretty much, uh, pretty much pigeonholed. You know what I mean? As far as this is your role, this is your role, this is your role. And there's pretty much no room to really level up, you know, if there's no boundaries set. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um, so it's, it's, it's everything. It's from like work responsibilities to communication. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're talking with your boss or coworkers and they overshare not under overshare like mm -hmm. shit. You ain't got no business knowing like <clears throat> the ins and outs of their marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, how much they can't stand their kids. Mm -hmm. um, uh, racist remarks for other races, you know, it's a, it's, it's a little bit of everything, man. It's, it's, it's one of those things, man. Like I said, it needs to be established off rip because once it gets too far gone, everybody like, Oh, well now, you know, you, you the PC police, you know what I mean? When you go to try to check that. And you know what, <clears throat> this is why I said, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to stop wearing that love on my sleeve. In certain places, let's say that. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can be sitting with a motherfucker and they get to talking about somebody and then you see them sitting with the next person and things getting spread around. We, are, You know, you hear people in society say, you know, people bring, you know, it's, you, you, people shouldn't bring work home. Right. You know, you think about people have bad days and they're bringing it home. Right. Well, people shouldn't bring home to work either. And I don't think we talk about that shit enough. People do overshare, man. And, you know, I get it. it you, you you get tired of being a robot because essentially that's what you are, the job. Yeah. Because you ain't supposed... Look, man, when you at a gig, if you're on a computer, you ain't supposed to be looking at shit, but what's on that computer, you ain't supposed to be playing no music, doing no outside shit. And the, the monotony of it, you sitting there doing that and you falling asleep, you... You, you know what I'm saying? And then that's you when you, you fall into that trap, and that's when you right. engage right. that person that you, you know go. you ain't got no business talking to. It's like right. you stepped on that damn rake. There you go. You know what I mean? Like I it's my fault. It's my fault. I engaged you. I, you know, tried to have a dialogue with you. But like you said, you get into this groove and you end up like, like you said, you're a robot. There and you, you want to break that monotony, and it's kind of like, hey man, what's going on with you? Right. Fuck. Why did I just ask him that? Why did I just ask him that? You know what I mean? Yep. And then that leads into the other shit. Then it's kind of like, oh man, I, you know, how do you cut it off? And and I think we all get we we're, we're all guilty of it to an, a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The best. You know what I found out? The best way to uh avoid that shit is do the work. It's only mean. so much you can do, man. You 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 do the work, and you don't want to be that antisocial person. But mm -hmm. you got to know, you know, it's one of those read the room. Absolutely, you know, who, you know who you fucking with, and you know who you can't fuck with. Absolutely, you know what I mean. And there's certain people who their whole sole purpose is to cross boundaries. You right. know what I mean? Just keep stepping over the line just right. to be provocative or just to get your attention, just to see if you even, you even focus, right. you know, on what they're saying, you know, it's like they want to get you to do one of those. what did he just say? You know, what she just right. say? You know, right. I can't believe she said that they want that kind of reaction. It's like, I'm sorry, man. If the only person that's happy to see you at home is your damn dog. Right. That's not on me, man. Don't, you know, don't bring that shit to work. There you, you know go. I mean? Don't unpack all your bullshit at work. Like you said, and don't bring that shit from work home as well. Now that's some shit I don't do. I I, I never go to work and just start unpacking shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but for me, I'm just using myself for example. You know, I'm addicted to fucking laughter, man. You know what I mean? So mm. I might talk about some innocent conversation, 
But you know, I've always been a type, even with women, because when I was a young man, probably 19, 20, I had another brother, like, you know, he was and saying certain things. And he was like, hey, man, if that's your girl, you know, you say you dig her. You know, you kind of want to watch what you put out there. Yeah. My, you know what I'm saying? My mother yeah. was al always taught me, never wear your heart on your sleeve. Always, never bring another man to your castle. So mm -hmm. the, the other important thing she said was when you get a place, get to a place, just be quiet and listen. Get the feel of the room. Right. Get the feel said, of the players the in the room. Yeah, read the right? room. Read the room. So, you know what I'm saying? Me, uh, I find other things to laugh about. You know, my home is not a laughing situation for me. That's some shit I take extremely serious. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, the only thing you're going to ever hear me say about my old lady outside my house is how much I love her. Other than that, it ain't a motherfucking thing that we need to talk about in my house. And again, some people, you know, you see this shit in the army a lot. Motherfuckers with high rank, they got these wives, they married these bitches, had two, three kids, <laughs> this this platypus built bitch, and making this nigga miserable. And he come, he stay at work till about 6 30, 7 30. He keeping yeah. you there. You like, why can't I go home? And next, <laughs> he wanna you know sit, chop it up. Yeah. You want he wanna yeah. chop it up. Then if you say the wrong thing, he in your ass, and then you finally meet this woman, and you like, nigga, oh, that's what it was. Got it. Got it. You. Yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, I'm glad you, you brought this topic up. You gentlemen brought this topic up because it's not just sexual boundaries. That's the easy shit. Facts. We always talk about, hey, man, don't overstep yourself. You don't yeah. want a workplace situation. Yep. But you invite other things by sharing too much, man, by overindulging. I get it, man. It's hard to be a robot. If you ain't a millionaire, you a motherfucking robot. That's just Facts. what it is. We. Facts. We we put them we put them uniforms on, or we put the keys on the hip to connect it to that retractable string. And we put our radio. little uh, our <laughs> yeah, radio, radio our ID. Yeah, right. And we get it. See me, I'm a motherfucker. I put my sh I'm a walking motherfucker. I don't sit for too long in one place. I laugh, he he ha. When I see they going, my you know, some time to go do a patrol. <laughs> 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 When the shit I, get dull, it's time right. to get up. I, get up I patrol, and take the spot. There you go. Yeah. I patrol once. Right on. Right you on. know, now, or, you know, I'm at that age where I put some wisdom out to the young bucks. So that's what I did, young player. <laughs> let me holler at you, blood. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you do. You do need boundaries in a workplace, man. Because um, and female. Cause male know, and not, female. Not to cut you off, because you got females who will... <laughs> this is the only time they're out with the opposite sex because mm -hmm. they may not do the club scene or whatever, you know, especially mm -hmm. during this pandemic. And you got female coworkers who want to overshare. I can't find a man, you know, a yeah. uh, little subtle sign. What are you doing this weekend? Whatever I'm doing, I'm with my lady. So right. after that, who knows, you know, <laughs> right. You know, you want maybe we might strange go to this weekend. <laughs> you know, it, right. it's, it's it's crazy. Again, you got to set boundaries. It's like, you know, if you choose to, you know, have a, you know, a, a work fling or something like that, that's on you. I, you should keep that to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just got folks who overshare, and it's, I mean, it's just a recipe for disaster. You know, long run. You just don't get it. Like people tend to feel free and comfortable. Like, oh, you're such a great getting paid to be here. If right. I wasn't here, I wouldn't be around you. You please understand that. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like this is my job. You know what I mean? My job isn't it doesn't say, you know, under you know, uh my 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 requirement is that I gotta let you vent to me. Right. You know what I mean? And people take advantage of that because again. There's nobody at home that they, they have an opportunity to do that with. And this is the only chance they get to engage an adult, you know, especially some females who got kids. Work is the club. You can tell by how they dress and all that shit. Like, where are you going? Mm -hmm. You know, why, it's it's Monday. Why are you dressed like that? You know what I mean? Shit, this is work. This is where we work. This isn't yeah. where we play. But you know, you and got I folks who, who who blur the lines. You know, mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, outside of like going to college, your social life is like damn near cut in half, you know, by the yeah. time you, you get to the workplace. Yeah. And that's the only place you get to socialize when you get older, man. I mean, you know, yeah. you're, you're going to run around with the same folks, you know, you're going to have a neighborhood bar that you drink at every week. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's the only place people get to vent outside of, you know, standing in front of the significant other. Are you right? It, but I, I look at it as if you telling all of your business, yeah, what are you going to do with mine? Mm-hmm. There you go. If you mm-hmm. such an open book about yourself, what are you going to do with the little bit, you know, that I give you? It's my That's my whole my whole take on it and that's how i look at it when i hear somebody talking about you know well you know my wife's dad is you know he's not doing good i will never ever meet this man i don't want to hear that bad news Mm. you know what i mean that's y'all shit (laughs) you know what i mean live die it makes no difference to me i will never meet this man but i don't want to hear about that shit well i i i get it i definitely get it and i feel it i just think man that we humans, man, and, and that's part of, you know, hold on one second. There we go. I mean, I, I guess that's part of the human experience, man, wanting to have somebody to talk to. You know, uh, like I said, man, it happens. You know, people tell a little bit, you know, I'm just one of them people that's like, uh-huh. Yeah. All right. I got to go on patrol. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but you're right, man. Boundaries are good for everybody, man. Everybody. You know? And again, like you said, you got jammed up by one of your bosses in the in the military. you like, you want to go home, but this dude, you know, yeah. home is, is worse than work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If he could work 24-7, he would. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But he got to go home tag out the wife or whatever, you know, with the kids and he ain't too fond of them neither. You know, they looking too much like her, you know what right. I mean? And shit, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I, and... it's messed up, man. It's just a messed up dynamic. It's like, you know, uh, what's that saying? Misery loves company. Right. You got motherfuckers going home to a meat grinder. Me, I can't wait. I'll get to the house. Dude. And like, <laughs> I, can't, I get in that shower and I just crawl in bed like, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, and I feel bad for anybody who doesn't have that kind of experience. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Who can't just drive straight home like shit. You know what? I'm just going to stop at this casino. You know, I'm just going to wait until I think she's in bed because I don't want to (laughs) talk. Especially to her. And that's a fucked up situation. I hate hearing about stuff like that. And it's like, I don't want that bad energy around me. You know what I mean? You got folks who feel just because you're not saying anything. You know what I mean? That is okay. I didn't say stop. Hey, man, that's too much. You know what I mean? We got to set some boundaries or what? You know, not too many dudes say those words. Hey, man, we need to set some boundaries. You know, no, no dude talk like that. No. But it should be off rip. It should be established. Yeah. Man, look, I know a motherfucker who say when he get off work, he say, man, I I hear daddy so much. And baby, he said, when I get, he said, when I get off work, I don't leave. He said, I sit here for 45 minutes to an hour. Oh my God. He said, then I go to Cold Stones. Damn. And I grab, uh, whatever. Yeah. He said, and then I have, and I know he ain't lying. I won't, I'm, I'm just going to say a God no. Right on. Then he said, I got a bench in the park. He said, I go sit in that motherfucker. Damn. Once I'm finished with my ice cream, I throw it away. He said, I might stop by the church. He said, but if I don't, he said, I go home and I sit in the driveway for another 15 minutes. Because as soon as I hit the door, it's daddy, daddy, daddy. Baby, baby, baby. Me, on the other hand, I can't wait to, to get I, home. I beat the fucking door <laughs> down. I get out the car, <laughs> do my security checks, lock the house down, cut the heat on for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause for, cause for me, man, look, let me tell you something. I'm at the age where, and this shit is going to suck. It's going to sound fucked up. Fuck meeting a motherfucking new friend. If you're fortunate, you might encounter 
somebody, you know, along the way that's cool. You know what I'm saying? When I was in Texas, I did that. Eight years, I, got, I think I got four homies. Mm. Two of them that are really, no, three. Two of them that's really fucking yeah. cool. Uh, one of them I was in the military with, so I don't count him as Texas. Um, now that I'm here, I got partners I speak to, cool brothers. The, the, the likelihood of us speaking after I leave that job is probably is going to be like, hey, man, what's up? How you doing? Or they're going to hit me up. But I'm at the age, man, where I'm just comfortable with having a family, having a wife. You brothers are my brothers. My wife is my wife and my best friend. I don't need that much outside stimulation because along with that shit comes other people's problems. Mm -hmm. You got to think about it. How often do you talk to that family member and they they telling you every fucking bad news event <laughs> that every other fucking family member is going to and you like man I don't care and every they like time I know the phone but ring I... and you see that name on there and it's like man what Listen, now yeah 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 let me tell you something I got a family member who is like you ain't gonna believe this that and the other and I will tell them nice wow. but verbatim yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I know you don't care, but just listen. Let me and you. So you sit there, you listen, and yeah. then it's like, why ain't you saying nothing? Because I told you I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> they get mad at you, right? right? Right. I'm like, I'm like, listen. I don't, and and then then I tell them like, I don't care, and I don't know why you give a fuck. Like that you part. got your own problems going that on, part. and you listen. So I say that to say when we start talking about other people. Coming into the conversation, you know, that shit I don't, I, I really don't need and care to hear, man. Said, but for that straight eight, and they could kind of press you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you said, you may be at the computer or whatever, and they come, you know, sit next to you, get on the other computer, and they, you're literally working, you know, doing training or whatever, and they still in your ear in your ear. And the fact that you're not even giving them eye to eye contact. They just need a body. Yeah. Right. To vent to. And it's like, oh and right. I, and I hate when that happens at work because when I come home, I don't have nothing left. Nothing. Turn in that motherfucker and say, hey, you know what? You need a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> get, all, get all this off your chest, man. Man, and I've been catching myself, man, because I come home and I and I get the snapping at the late, and I'm like, "That's not even on you. That's on me. I know where this is coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm letting this damn gig zap everything. You know what I mean? Because I'm sitting there, and it's just draining. It's taking my energy just sitting there listening to the yeah. bullshit. It was like, you know, damn well I can't relate to what you're going, what you're going through. I don't have any of that, any of those issues." None. So I can't do the back and forth with you, you know? So the only time I bring it home is if it's something to laugh about. <laughs> the only other time is this situation I had this week. And I had to. I had to restrain a motherfucker. You That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. Huh? What would you say? I had to put the pause on him. I had to put the pause on him. Oh, man. Look, I ended up with another motherfucker piss on me. Man, I was hurt. <laughs> um, yeah. You know you had yeah, the hospital, bro. man. You know you had the hospital. Where, where, where did, you get, did it get in your mouth? No, Stop, it was, it was Stop, no. Man. No, because I, I was restraining the dude. He was on, he was hanging off the bed. I come around the corner. And you one throw of the a nurses, diaper at you? No, uh, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Stop interrupting, man. Yeah, Let the listen. Speak. So yeah, one of the nurses came around. I said, hey, we need to I come around the corner. And the nurse had him. He's like, man, this motherfucker tried this, this white dude. He said, this motherfucker just took a swing at me, hit me in the jaw. So I grabbed him, and I went to put my knee on him. I wasn't thinking nothing of it. You know, to brace him up against the bed. Yeah. And so she said, we got to get him back in the bed, but we got to change his bed. I'm like, why? And so I knew my knees started feeling funny. So I said, what the fuck we got to... I said, okay, go ahead. They pulled the sheet off. I wasn't paying attention to the sheet. 
I just knew the bed was covered in piss. It was a puddle of piss. A puddle of piss in the bed from where he was laying. Next thing I knew, man, we get him in the bed. I was like, what the fuck? I said, why is my pants sticking to me? Oh. I called my old lady. I said, baby, I got piss on me at the hospital. <laughs> I said, is, she said, sweetie, just go wash it off with some soap and grab the wipes and wipe down your pants. I was fucking mortified. You got to have an extra uniform in the whip or right. something, man. You always got to pack an extra uniform, man. Yes, I, yeah. and that's going to happen. Yeah, that's going to happen. You got to get an extra uniform at work, man. It's going to yeah. happen, especially when you're doing what you do. Yes. Yeah. Now, so that no, type quit. of shit, quit. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's yeah. Those but, are just, the days. Those are those days where, like, man, what? You rethinking yeah. everything. You rethinking but you like, know, this shit ain't worth it. Nope. But see, this type, but see, other shit, I, I keep it from the house. One, because this ain't my forever place. Facts. Two, because my wife works hard. I don't want to bring that shit to her, and she mm-hmm. didn't probably had a rough ass day. We yeah. supposed to be each other's comfort zones, and that's so. And that's what we do as men. There you go. We block all that. We won't tell. Her, How was your day? It was cool. Knowing yo, from the time you punched in to the time you punched out, it was a big ball of fuckery. There the whole go. damn day, but you want to check it out the door. It. Yeah, yep. you check it out the door. And you eat it. So, yeah, anybody that's listening to this, man, if you are at a place where there is a lot of noise, get yourself some boundaries, man. Let yeah. motherfuckers say, oh, he don't talk to nobody. He antisocial. Yeah. That's all the motherfuckers would be able to say. Yes, sir. That's yeah. all they'd be able to say. Yeah, man. Like I said, it's just one of those I wanted to touch on a little bit because it's, especially during, you know, this uh, pandemic, Mm -hmm. you know, folks are more isolated. They're not getting out as much. So again, work is the new hangout, the new club, the new scene, you you know, and it's like, dude, I, you feel, you, you get mad, but then you feel sad because you're you hearing what, what they're going through. And it's like, man, that is fucked up. I would be kind of messed up, too, if I had that kind of, you know, shit to go home to, you know? Right. Yeah, I, I feel bad for you. But again. What the fuck it got to do with me? Facts. <laughs> <laughs> facts, man. That's what it is. <laughs> got what shit the fuck to do, with, do me, with me, man. man. I'm trying to live my best one. Right. You, you know, I'm sorry. I'm up. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. go for it man go for it man hit go it, for oh, it. 